Hello there, YouTube. So today I'm going to show you my DIY PVC greenhouse. So uh, I'm going to take you around and show you a little bit about it. So I made all of it out of uh, PVC and, and some pressure treated lumber um, and then covered it with uh, polycarbonate panels that I bent down to follow the curve of the PVC. As you can see here. Uh, the, the polycarbonate panels I purchased from Lowe's um, along with the little strips you can see here that go along the PVC where I screw it down. Now to heat the greenhouse I created a solar heater. So let's go in and take a look inside. So, so inside here I, I have two large uh, barrels filled with water that hook to the solar heater up on the roof. And there's a pump down here. Right there, you can see it. When the temperature inside the solar heater hits, I believe I have it set at 70 or so. When it hits 70, the pump automatically turns on and circulates the hot water out of the panel into these barrels. And then during the night when it gets cold, the hot warm, the warm barrels slowly release their heat back into the greenhouse to help keep everything warm. Now in the event that it gets really cold, I have down here a, an electric heater that is also hooked to a thermostat that will turn on if the temperature gets around 35 or so. So currently I just have a cactus and some herbs that I brought in. I'm going to start growing some lettuce and spinach over here and some kale I brought in from my garden. And the main purpose for the greenhouse is to uh, store my fig trees in during the winter. So I live in Pennsylvania. Our temperatures at night get down to um, the coldest is around zero uh, on a few rare occasions. Um, so this one I brought in early because it still has lots of figs on it. So I'm hoping that they can have time to ripen. But then the rest of my fig trees, I'm just gonna leave out here and, and let them go dormant out here. That way I don't need to store them inside because we just don't, don't have space for them. I have a little window over here that automatically opens and closes. Um, I took the piston out, but this piston goes in here and allows the, the window to open and close when it gets hot to let heat out. Um, the floor, I put uh, these insulation panels down and I also along the perimeter, I dug down about a foot or so and put the insulation panels down along the perimeter of the entire greenhouse to keep cold from seeping in through the ground. And then as you can see, I also <clears throat> on the inside put up this uh, film, plastic film, to give us two layers of uh, protection against the cold to help insulate. So there's a layer of uh, air in between the outside and the inside. Right here's a um, temperature sensor that goes inside inside the shed. I will take you in there in a second and show you that. Um, so I used a lot of this stuff to seal up gaps. Um, I, I used it rather than the great stuff, the yellow stuff, uh, because this supposedly is going to be a little more UV protection. Um, it's not going to degrade quick, as quickly as the yellow great stuff. Now, I did use some of it, as you can see down here. Um, but I did try and paint it white to help protect it from UV radiation. Um, this stuff, it seems to work nicely, except it doesn't harden very well. Um, if it's moist at all, like this, with the, the greenhouse being so moist, um, it, it tends to not harden sometimes. But anything that's exposed to the outside hardened up just fine. So, so far, 
uh, we haven't had too many super cold nights. It's still early fall here in Pennsylvania. So um, the temperature got down below freezing maybe once or twice. And so far on average, uh, the greenhouse has been staying about 10 degrees warmer than outside, uh, which I, I think is pretty good. So we'll see what happens when it gets really cold out. Um, I also purchased a small uh, lantern that I plan on lighting and leaving run out here at night during the winter when it's forecast to be extremely cold just to save on electricity so this little guy doesn't have to run quite as often. Um, I'll definitely do an update video after it gets cold outside and let you all know how, how well everything's working here. Okay, let's go ahead and go inside the shed now and I'll show you the thermostats that control the pump as well as the heater. And you can see here some of the bubbles going down through the tube. I don't know if it focuses, yeah. So it's not a whole lot of flow going through. I, I think I, I should really get a bigger pump. Um, this little guy is really quite small but it does the trick so far but i think a larger one would work better so in here inside the shed is where i have the thermostats that control the pump as well as the heater so the one on the left here is controls the pump um, so currently up in the uh, solar heater it's 68.7 degrees and you can see that the pump is turned on. That's what that little light means right there. And I currently have it set at 65. So when it hits 65 degrees, the pump comes on and runs until it goes below 65. Um, and that circulates the water down into the barrels. And the one on the right is for the heater. So it's set at 36. Um, so if it gets super cold at night, it'll turn on the electric heater and help keep things toasty warm. Well, not really toasty, but it'll keep, help keep things from freezing. Okay, now let's go ahead up and look at the solar heater and I'll show you a little bit about that. Okay, so up here's the solar heater. Um, what it is, is a, a heater designed for swimming pools. Um, it's a solar heater for swimming, swimming pools that I put inside this uh, polycarbonate panel case, basically. Now I made two layers of polycarbonate panels, you can see here, with a little air gap in between them, um, just to help insulate. Uh, I also, in between the two layers, I put silica gel as a decandescent to absorb any moisture that is trapped in between the panel, the two panels. Um, and then I also put silica gel, I don't know if you can see it right here, inside to absorb any moisture so that condensation doesn't happen too bad inside. Now, so far, um, if I don't circulate water through it, the temperature gets very hot. Um, it's been already above uh, the boiling point. so. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do during the summer when I'm not using the greenhouse. I'll probably have to take this down so it doesn't overheat. Now again, the outside, you can see uh, the PVC that I used. Uh, what I did was I got these uh, four-way jobs and I actually drilled out the center so that this horizontal piece could slide right through. So I glued this and glued that and then just drilled that and, and put that through. And so far it's holding up quite well. Uh, it's not leaking. Um, we do get quite a bit of snow sometimes during the winter. Uh, so we'll see how well it holds up to the snow load. Uh, it should be okay. Um, as you saw in the inside, I did put this two by four, as you can see right here, across in the middle just to help brace things. Um, now, because I bent the polycarbonate panels, they did buckle a little bit along the seams right here, as you can see. So I, I put silicone caulk in there just to make sure that no air seeps through. 